it's been a while since I've turned the camera on and let myself ramble for a little while and then disguised it as an opinion piece, so here we are. Heroic have benched Cadia. Now, it seems to be a mutual agreement about uh, disagreements over the future of the team, so pretty much meaning Cadian wants to change things up, the org wants to change things up in a different way, and this is where we've ended up. So rather than linger on Heroic's issues with Cadian, what led to this happening, I think it's best if we look at the future. Where could he go? I think there's three teams that are interesting to talk about in this sense. Three teams that are actually going to be looking to make changes themselves. And three teams that really, I think should, if they haven't already, strongly consider making their moves for Cadian. Reaching out to Heroic to see what kind of buyout they can discuss. And also seeing if Cadian's willing to take the risk of leading their project. We'll start with the team that is the most interesting to me. And that's Falcons. Now Falcons is one of those teams who have actually not too long ago built their roster. Now they are three months I believe into their tenure but they've not actually played a whole load of maps. I think 37 with this roster. I think only 35 including MHL. So they're not an old roster. They've not had a lot of time to develop but already things looked kind of iffy. At Game of 8 they went straight out which was supposed to be their homecoming event. Sure they actually played like heroic <laughs> not the easiest opening game on land for a team but still a 2-0 demolition you'd expect a little bit more well but really you're hoping for a little bit more the reasonable man would have bet on this but it's just not a great look they've also had mixed bag results online not playing against the highest level of opposition they made it out of uh, the cct north europe series eight or whatever the hell they're called they've got so many of these events going on it's kind of hard to keep track but they made it out of that they beat teams like i'm just going to bring up the list and read them off pge turov b8 and nine pandas it's not exactly the cream of the crop they then went on and played the cct europe east series and here they went 3-1 then lost their first playoff game to aurora but they were able to beat sampi los cagutos and nine pandas again these are really not big wins and taking losses like 2-1 to tsm in their opener doesn't fill you with confidence. So they're of course looking for a change and with their signing of Zonic and of that other guy, the GM, who is secretly, if you look into it, kind of the mastermind behind a lot of these great teams, these major winning rosters, there's definitely big things on the horizon. There's already been murmurings of signings like Dupree and Magisk potentially being transferred over to a teams like Falcons and there's also been some really unsubstantiated but they're there for a reason like rumors about falcons making four changes so falcons are definitely a team on the market to make some moves but why now well anyone who can't figure that out <laughs> i'm sorry uh no school can make you smarter in this sense it's obviously with cs2 being on the release every team wants to be peaking with that first major that first major of cs2 is going to have a whole wave of fresh new eyes players or well people viewers in this sense because they won't be playing the game they'll be viewing their first ever major for a lot of them the orcs are going to want to be on that stage present in front of those new people they're going to want to establish themselves in the memory of every fan remember a team like dignitas has not been relevant in tier one for five six years we all still know the name we all still know the brand it's the same thing those teams that made an impact early on were remembered Teams like 3D Max have had more cultural significance than hell. Real competitive tier 2 teams now because they were able to have that one little run early on at CSGO Majors. Being at the first Majors is incredibly important. Now this was the case with the CSGO Majors and it turned out to be a good thing as the game got bigger. We know the game is huge. We know it's going to be even bigger when CS2 Majors come around. This is the prime time. So you can't afford to not make it through the RMRs and qualify for these events. Now of course taking a risk on Cajun here likely means he's going to have to be a rifling IGL. I don't really see them making a move to bring him in and cutting MHL. I think this roster really has to keep MHL and Boros solid. You're not going to find upgrades at these positions for cheap, and you're definitely not going to find upgrades that are guaranteed to work out, outside of the very biggest names who will literally set you back seven or eight figures. There's no guarantee to an upgrade right there. There's no guarantee to an upgrade out there. Unless FaZe is liquidating and you can get like a Brokey in, you can somehow get a hold of Twist, which allegedly Vitality are trying to do, or you can get a hold of a player like Rops. There's not many upgrades lying about. Add on to this the fact that there are definitely players worthy of cutting on this roster 
and bringing in Cadian makes perfect sense. Again, I think it makes sense to bring him in as a rifler, but if you really want to bring him in as an AWPer, there have been worse ideas. Just going down this roster, MBK, Body, Lionex, not a single one of them has been really convincing. Sure, Body performs at a fairly decent level, but he's been at this level for years, and we've seen him at the highest level. It doesn't get a lot better. You need to make it out of the RMRs. Body doesn't seem like the guy to get you out of them. MBK used to be the kingmaker. He hasn't been that for years. I mean, sure, he looks like the kind of player you'd want on your roster to mentor your young guys and bring them up through the scene. But if he's not been able to do that for all this time when he's been when he's been down in the doldrums, in dogfights, with nothing rosters, he's not been able to magically make them better. I don't see the value in keeping him around. He's not going to be able to frag. Now, Lowenex is a player I believe has a lot of potential. He's a lot of skill, and we saw it on times during his Sprout days. When he's allowed to go and playmake, he can really find impact. But he simply hasn't on this roster. So, ideally, I'd like to keep him. I would, in a dream scenario, be cutting MBK and Body and bringing in Magus and Cadian. But I could completely understand if you want to make a case for keeping Body, cutting Lonex, and making those same two additions. Because, of course, Magus is another player who's been rumored to move around. He's extremely strongly linked to moving with Zonic two Falcons because it just makes sense. They've already got all that history, all those majors won. Well, we're up to four between the two of them. I don't like the idea of bringing Dupree in because I think he is past it. I don't want to see him competing on this roster. I don't mind the idea of him forming a little tier two renegade side with a bunch of other Danes to try and forge some sort of a comeback path for himself. But I don't want to see him straight onto teams that should be immediately competing. That should not be his spot right now. He should be an, a mentor to younger players trying to build their way up. But a roster of, for example, Cadian, Magus, MHL, Boros, and Launex, switch out those rifles as you wish, actually has some potential. It's dangerous. If Cadian can establish a good system, if he can get the most out of his players like he did during the majority of those heroic days, man, he's got something on his hands here. We've already seen Boros play on a big stage, the biggest stage, and absolutely dominate. I think he's the only player who's untouchable on this roster. I get it. Personality issues. But name a young hyper aggressive player who is able to smack heads on the highest stage doesn't come with some sort of luggage it's just a part of the deal that confidence comes with some offsets and that's perfectly okay you need a player who's able to do that you've got boros i think you have to keep him all in all it's a roster move i'd be more than willing to see but it's not the only option let's move on to astralis now there's already been some murmurings behind the scenes of things changing at astralis again now ever since they peaked at im cologne with their third or fourth place finish it's all been downhill. Now, they've not been able to get the same level of production out of all the players. They never really got much out of them. It was mostly blame F and device. And I don't expect it to take an uptick anytime soon. This is for one simple reason. They have blame F. And blame F as an IGL has shown in the past that he can floor raise with the best of them. Now, in that sense, you could maybe compare him to, say, uh, a LeBron James. Like, your team is guaranteed to be a certain minimum of good just because blame F is there. But is he the IGL you want with young players? who need to be told the sort of things they should be doing, who need a little more man management, who need to be motivated, hyped, allowed to take their own fights at their own pace. Does that really feel like a blame F system? Now, he's had some small amount of success with Complexity, which did have players like Oboe, who were incredibly young, but that project didn't last very long, and what we've seen in this team has not been positive. Now, the Cadian move here, again, is putting him on the rifle. I think... <laughs> People have been clamoring for him to be a rifler for years, even on Heroic during their, well, their lead up to them being really a, com a competitive elite team. There was always this call for putting him on a rifle, giving Stown the AWP, and well, seeing if the team figures out a higher level from there, because he wasn't a bad AWPer by any means. He wasn't a fallen level of IGL AWPer who was really holding the team back. But of course, there's a big difference between that and a player like Device, a player like Sun Pius, a player like Zywu, a player like Simple. All of these guys who are so much more impactful on the AWP than Cadian ever was, even if he was at times literally very impactful. He was always streaky, you know, he had those flashy moments, flashy highlights, memorable stuff. Like, we all remember a Cadian clutch, but we needed the consistency, and that was never really something that he got. A part of it, I'm sure, is the stress of having to be the AWPer alongside everything else. It makes sense to bring him in here as an IGL. Now, it seems most likely that three of the five are going to stay on this current Astralis roster, being Device, Blame F, and Buzz. That seems to be the most likely rumor. I ideally, I'd like them to keep Stair and just bring Caden in for Borup, but the roles don't make sense. Stair struggled, and I think what they need is another more role-based player, a player who can play passively, a player who can 
sit in the pack and trade and do fundamental things correctly. I think Buzz has been more relied on for the entry side of the dirty work. I think the other side of it could be handled by a player like Zyphon. I think that'd be a great addition. Uh, every time I bring this up, there's always someone who goes, ah, oh, but they already kicked him once. Yeah, from Astralis Talent two years ago. And since then, he's been phenomenal on a variety of rosters. I think he'd be a great addition to this team. So that's kind of the idea behind the Cadian joining Astralis move. Playmaths and IGL, we kind of saw his peak. Things have fallen off. We want to take IGL ship out of his hands, return him to being just the superstar. I mean, he's already great as a superstar whilst calling. He puts up crazy numbers. He's one of the most skilled rifles in the game. Imagine if the team system around him still let him thrive, as we've seen. Caden can allow his players to do in his system. We allow Blame F to thrive, but then we also get a little more structure for the players who need it. Your players like your Stare and Buzz, if you keep Stare. I think Buzz stays no matter what. For the Xyphon who comes in, for example, to fill in that fifth slot. I know, there are other options in Denmark, don't get me started. But the one I'm rooting for is, of course, my prospect, Xyphon. I think there's a lot of really, really positive things to say about that sort of addition. The question is then, what kind of funds do Astralis have? They've not made blockbuster moves to improve this roster yet. They made a lot of cool little additional moves, like signing Stair, bringing in Borup to fill out the roster, which kind of just makes sense, but they've not made big moves. So if they can't afford to come and swing for Cadian, they might be stuck with this for a while. But if they can go and get Cadian, maybe they can go and make those bigger moves as well. I think an overall roster of Cadian, Device, Blame F, Buzz and Xyphon, for example, Xyphon, I know I'm going to have a bitter argument about that with someone, is a, is a core of players that looks honestly ready to compete again. They were able to compete without everything making sense and slotting in. Imagine if it did. I'm just saying, that'd be one hell of a roster. But finally, let's talk about a team who they've already started making changes. Ever since they put the team together, they've looked like they needed changes. That's because, to be honest, the way they constructed this team made no sense. That's Liquid. Now, I said this the moment it happened, but signing Patsy and Rain Waker on a team with Yakindar and Naf felt a bit weird. Now, I know it's kind of the roles haven't been too awkward, especially on the Yakindar front. Like, Yakindar's been able to give up some of his opening fights to Patsy, and Patsy, all in all, hasn't needed to be the 30% OPK guy he could be at times on Spirit. He's been able to maintain that balance pretty well, I think. The combination of Yakindar and Daps, uh, that is. They've maintained that balance between Yakindar and Patsy pretty favorably. The problem's been more on the Rainwaker and Naf front. Wait, Rainwaker, everyone's saying, oh, he's so disappointing, he's so this, he's so that. Yeah, it's been rough. I've been rooting for the guy. I wish it worked out. It really hasn't. I think a part of it is when we've seen him at his best on 500, on those various Bulgarian teams, when they've been trying to win the game, uh, he's been more of a, well, really a NAF style player. He's not just an anchor and a late round finisher. He's also got moments where he'll take aggression, moments where he'll take focus, where he'll be set up to go and win a round. It's not as common, and he's definitely not going for a lot of openers, but he's definitely able to pick his spots in rounds to go and make plays, and that's definitely something that's not been a part of his role on Liquid. I also think given more time, because again, they've played three months together. I mean, how many maps exactly? 34 maps. 34 maps of competitive play. I think over a longer period of time, especially for a team that's transitioning from a lot of these players speaking their native tongue to English, Given another three month period, maybe with more games to play, because 34 maps, we'd have seen more out of Rainwaker. When he's got more synergy with his teammates, he's more willing to call for that flash on the right timing when he just feels it instinctively, like he would back when he was a star on 500. I think we'd have seen better things, but as it stands, he's been cut. Daps is filling in as IGL, which I think also says a lot about the team's struggles. If immediately Daps is also just going to call, Clearly things weren't working out on that front either, but I don't think it's as simple as bringing in Cadian for Rain Waker's spot. I think this is one of the more controversial ideas, more, one of the more, well, actually not controversial, but just one of the harsher ideas. I would bring Cadian in for OC, and I would go look for another rifler to fit in Rain Waker's shoes. I think this team looks a lot better that way. Because what have we been getting from OC, really? Against top competition, we've been getting slightly better than Halzerk. Is that, is that really what we want? Because Cadian has been, again, better than that, whilst calling on his team, going deep in events. 
if you're gonna have to pick between the two of them all being on your side, I think you have to go with Cadian. It feels harsh to say to OC, who at times in the past has been stuck in a team with poor leadership, strats that didn't really make sense, his role not being, I don't think, suited to him entirely. But we've seen enough iterations of this roster, of this squad, we've seen enough of OC really to just say, he's just not got it. He's just not got it. It might be a confidence thing. He needs to go down to tier two or go down to a slightly lesser American squad. Hey, maybe complexity can cut Holzerk. Bring in OC, a slight upgrade, and build from there. But in any case, it hasn't been OC's team. It just hasn't worked out. I think sending him down to JT, who he was familiar with, who he put up great numbers with, who they even, you know, they shot the world a little bit when they were extra salt. I think that'd be a, a great benefit to him. So bring in Katie for him, figure out a rifler to fill in Rainmaker's shoes. Now the roster won't be able to go back to NA. Clearly it'll still have a massive EU majority, so they won't be able to go through the easy mode of the RMRs, which is one of the things I think actually makes it not too likely to happen, this move. Because a lot of people on paper have immediately started. I've seen the YouTube poll I put out just before I recorded this said everyone wants them to go to Liquid. If Liquid do this, they're never going to play in the America's RMR again, basically. They'll have four Europeans. Three, if they just putting him in for Rain Waker and tell him to rifle. That's pretty ugly. You have to make a lot of big changes to get back to being a North American team and actually probably make a major because the EU RMR is brutal and it's not getting any easier as time goes on. So that's the one downside. I think a lot of people would like to make a case for, for example, signing a North American IGL in the space of Rain Waker. It's not going to be convincing. A lot of, It's going to take a lot of convincing from Liquid to actually promote that sort of move. But at the end of the day, you want to be a part of that first major. As I said, just all the way at the start, when I was talking about Falcons, you want to be a part of that first CS2 major. Are you going to do it coming through the EU RMR with this roster? Even with Cadian, for example. I don't think you are. If you do make this Cadian move, you have to then go out and find a banger to fill in for Rain Waker. Now, the best suggestion I've actually seen was someone replied to my tweet when I initially saw this move go through. I was actually talking about bringing in Cello or Jota, a Brazilian. That might be the solution. You might have to go looking in South America to find a rifler to fill in for Rain Waker to try and get yourself closer to the America's armor, but you're still one player short. Now, Patsy may not be long for this team. If things keep going the way they're going, you might see Patsy get out the door by the end of the year. And if Patsy's gone, you've got a spot to fill there, you can maybe bring in a North American. Hey, at that point, you can start looking at guys like Malbs and D. If you're bringing in a more aggressive player, because filling, filling in the spot for Rain Waker is tough. He's, he's a passive role, a bitch role. Let's put it that way. It's not a spot you're going to find a lot of talented players for, just naturally. But if, hey, if, you, if you're moving, removing Patsy and you're looking for a guy, Malbs and D might be your player. He brings you close to the America's RMR. It makes a lot of sense. So, Long term, a lot to think about, a lot to see with this Liquid roster. Entering the sweepstakes for Cadian mostly makes sense just because they need to change it up. It hasn't been working, Yekinda calling just isn't working. Bring in someone else and see what you can get working. But alright, if you enjoyed, like and sub. I can't promise you a lot more of these type of videos, but hey, just felt like making this one. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.